In this video demonstration, I will show you how to make a book using a link stitch. And we'll sew it into cardstock folio so that it makes the case. A unique characteristic is that when you make the, the folio out of cardstock the same size as the book block, you end up with a very small square. The book opens up very easily and can lay flat to be, to be used for writing. I hope you enjoy the demonstration. The lines have been drawn. They're not exactly spaced, but it's very, very close. I'll take a, a thin blade with fine teeth. It's got a stiff back. A saw is going to have a direction which it's easier to use. And this one, it's easier to use if I pull it. I don't want to saw too too far down into it. I'll take a as I go to sew it I'll check each one and then I may need to use a needle. Sewing this book will be very similar to other videos that I've made with the Coptic stitch. Um, we're gonna link these together maybe in a modified Coptic. I'm gonna start on the bottom of this of this cover folio and then I'm gonna alternate between the cover piece and the first signature. It doesn't matter how many signatures I have. In order to make this video as short as possible, I'm going to use four blank signatures and a front cover and a back cover. I like to sit with my body to the side. I'm right-handed. I'll use my left hand to support the the signatures or the folios that I'm sewing and I would like to start on the end closest to me but it doesn't matter if you start at the far at the far edge or the near edge I'm going to start from the outside take my needle and go inside one thing that I do normally is rotate the needle as soon as I bring it through and then I'll pull the thread in the direction that I'm sewing. Again with these first two signatures I'm going to alternate. So <clears throat> I'm going to take the thread directly from this hole to the one directly above it and again I'm going to turn my needle as soon as I can and then pull the thread. I'll just make sure that there aren't in, it's not loose. After the coming out of this hole, I'll go into the hole inside the the folio, the cover folio, and I'll bring that out and I'll turn this around immediately. Finish there, go inside. It's just a matter of alternating from one signature to the next. I finished coming out of the last signature or sewing station. I'm going to take a moment and open up the cover folio and make sure that I don't have any excess. And you'll notice here it alternates and it alternates. So now in this, for these first two, I'm going to go back into the 
the cover. Let me go into the cover. You can see the needle. Turn my needle right away. And in this case, I'm pulling the, the thread in the direction that I'm sewing. I never want to pull it this direction because I run the risk of, of tearing the, the edge of the paper. Once again, I alternate from the cover to the signature. And now I'm going to complete the areas that don't have any thread. I don't want to, I don't want to tie a knot. Pull the thread in the direction I'm sewing. Make sure it's tight. And you can see now I'm starting to, you can see I'm filling in the gaps. I'll go below. coming to the end so I want to make sure that I have these to be tight and now I've completed going up and back and I'm going to tie a knot. I can use the magnet to hold my needle. So I have the first two completed. It's actually almost like a small book already since the thread is tied. So now I'll just bring the next one over and it won't, it won't make any difference how many remaining signatures as the sewing will be the same for each one. So I go from the one beneath to this one and turn my needle around and pull in this direction. In order to have uniformity in the pattern, if I'm going in this direction, I always start on the other side. And when I come back, I'll, I'll follow that pattern where I, where I go to the other side. Now the way that I like to do this, I put the needle, you can see that the thread from the previous stitch, I put the needle on the other side. I'll take the needle and push up because it's just going to be between, the needle is simply between this signature and this signature. And when I pull it through, I'll immediately just this way and wrap around the stitch between the first two signatures. I'll go into the, the third signature. I can use this needle and I like to use a longer needle because I can use that to help lift this signature. And then I'll turn my needle. Sometimes it gets tight, and I'll just be patient.
I found that simply going between these signatures, lifting this up using my left hand, and then pull this through and bring it out, it makes for a very fast stitch. And go back in the signature. Doing this method, I can bring the needle in and I don't even have to use lift it up to see it. I can find it with my, my fingers and keep working. Since I have pre-punched pre holes, I don't have to lift it up to see it. My needle can find it. This is another very critical moment. Before I continue sewing, I want to bring, and I want to link the thread between the signature that is immediately below. In this case, it's the cover and the first signature. I'll link that one time, and I'll make sure that everything is tight and then I'll bring the next signature. And at this point, it's, at this point, it's the same for every remaining signature. Since I'm going in this direction, since I'm sewing this direction, I'm gonna insert this needle in the signature directly below on this side of the stitch. I'll lift this up, immediately turn it around, create the link, tighten my stitch, and keep going. Come to the end of this signature and it's important to link it to the signature below.
in. I'm coming to the, the final signature of this book. Yours may have many more. Again, now I'm going to go to the opposite side of that stitch. Now, if by chance If by chance your thread should become too too short to continue, you can look online to find a way to tie a weaver's knot. That's the way that I'll I will bring my thread here, tie it, and hope that the knot will land between these two holes. I don't want to tie a knot and then try to rip it through the holes. So if, if you should run out of thread, you'll get a new piece of thread, tie a weaver's knot, and just continue. And then inside your book, you'll have a small knot. But at that, I do that when I have a real thick book or if I should misjudge how much thread I need. I've also used seven sewing stations. You could use five. You could use pretty much any number you want to. I just chose to use seven. The more sewing stations, it takes a little longer. the last signature so I'm going to link it underneath and I'll bring my cover folio over and sew it exactly the same way as all the others
come to the last I've come to the last sewing station of the last signature. I'll tighten this, I'll pull it tight, and then I'm going to run it in this link below. This time I am going to tie a knot. I don't need to catch the first one. And I'll, I'll do that again. Tie another knot and avoid grabbing the thread from the very first signature set. This is complete. If you inspect these links, they, they'll look fairly uniform. However, the end, the pattern of the end will be different than these because the nature of, of, of the sewing is different. This, is com this part is complete. I'll cut these. I can have a little excess and I, I'll cut it down a little bit, but I can apply this on the spine in our next step when we put adhesive. Now that the book's sewn, I've placed it between boards. These boards are half inch uh, construction grade plywood. It could be any, any board. The book is small, therefore I'm, I'm only using one clamp. If the book were larger, I would certainly use two clamps. As I said, the book is small. It's about, it's under six inches uh, and about four and a half inches. This 15 centimeters by 12 centimeters. So it is a, you know, it, it's a, it's a one hand book. It's, it's not a large book. My next step is to cut these and then put adhesive on, on the spine and cover it with some thin paper. I like to use a PVA. This is a product that I can buy locally in Madison, Wisconsin. It's a library supply. And I buy a gallon at a time. <clears throat> um, you, you'll be surprised how much you will use if you're making a portfolio case or you're lose, if you're using larger projects. And I, I, dis, I dispense it out into a, a smaller jelly or jam jar. Um, I like to keep this on hand because it's not an adhesive that travels well in the winter if you have to ship it. Um, you can buy PVA in stores. There are many, many brands of PVA that we use. Sometimes it's Linco, sometimes it's uh, Sobo. Um, jade, d different products, different manufacturers. I've cut a, not sure how you, well you can see that, but I've cut a real thin piece of Japanese tissue. This is um, a handmade Japanese, so it doesn't have any grain. If you were using a, a, a standard paper that was thin, I would make I would prefer to have the grain running the long way. I'll just take a small pair of scissors and just cut this. I'll cut these with a slight leftover part because I am going to glue them down on the spine I don't if I, I I don't know if I cut them too short if it would unravel but this way I'll be able to glue the ends down since we used the saw to cut into the spine the stitching tends to nest inside the spine and and the spine is a a little bit smoother than had we just used a a hole and the, left the thread on the outside. Sometimes I might build up uh, smaller pieces to build this up, but since this is going to have uh, a fairly stiff, I mean it's not going to be a board, but it, it's going to have some cloth. I'm probably, I'm not going to build that up, but I'll just take a little bit of adhesive in it. A practice, a good practice to use is to dab off any adhesive inside the jar not to run it across the top it'll just make 
the jar easier to uh, open and close if you haven't put adhesive on there. This brush is very stiff. I'm dabbing the adhesive into the spaces between the signatures. And I want to be careful not to get any any adhesive to go off the edge. The same on the bottom so that the adhesive doesn't spill over the base of the book and the head of the book. I want to work fairly quickly. This synthetic adhesive dries fairly quickly and I and I don't want to, to for it to dry on the brush to make the brush even more stiff. It's good to have a damp sponge or rag close by. I'm just using my finger. This Japanese paper molds to the spine very well. And since the spine is going to be covered, I'll just take a, a knife and trim it. I am trimming it maybe a sixteenth of an inch from the base or the foot. And it, it's fine if I take my brush that has a little bit of adhesive and just tap it down. If I'm working with multiple books, I've used a hair dryer to speed this up, but often I have enough things to do to allow it to, to often I have enough to do just to allow it to dry naturally. I'll wash the brush off so it doesn't get stiff and dry. I'm going to let that sit a few minutes. It's been 20, 25 minutes. This is very dry. You'll notice that I added some wax paper. Often, if the boards are the same height as the book, if you apply too much adhesive, it might spill over and actually attach itself to the book. By using wax paper, should you have an accident, It'll stick to the wax paper. You can remove it from this block. And being wax paper, it'll come off from the book a little easier and you can throw that away. That's one method of ensuring that your book doesn't stick to the, to the wood. Um, since these are shorter and I was applying very little, I, I wasn't concerned about it uh, spilling over, but it's not a bad habit. Uh, to practice to put these in there. Okay, so we're going to take this out of the out of the clamp. And you can see the spine is is dry and that Japanese tissue is bonded very well to the spine of the book. Um, if you wanted to make this feel a little flatter prior to taking it out of the blocks you could have added a second um, a layer. So what's going to happen next is we're going to attach a piece of book cloth onto the spine. So this this is a a traditional piece of book cloth that has some some backing on it. it looks like paper backing I've carefully drawn on here and any time that you do draw on a piece of book cloth you want to be very sure that you're using a faint line you're not using some material or ink that would show through um, I, I really drew this a little bit more for this video and I may actually erase it beforehand um, so the, the distance from here to here 
is is exactly the same as the book or slightly larger. I'd rather it be slightly longer than the book than than shorter and that might be a preference but I want it to be as close to the the distance of the foot of the book and the head of the book. I want that to be as close as possible. Prior to gluing it on there I've taken a piece of the same index paper or this cover stock. I've taken a piece of that cover stock and I've cut it exactly the width. I've cut it exactly the width of the spine. And here again I'd rather it be on the narrow side than on the on the too thick side. And I'm going to adhere that down so that it it fits underneath here. This distance is about half an inch um, and I've also cut this at a slight angle so that when the book so that when it wraps around the book I don't have I, I eliminate the possibility of some of this edge coming out we're going to cover that so that it's not the worst thing if it does we're going to cover this with a piece of paper you'll notice that I have scored I don't know how if the light will cast a little bit of a shadow but I have scored so that this is crisp and then this happens to be there's a little halfway mark this spine piece which is the thickness of the spine sits in the middle of this this is about two and a half inches because I'm not going to have any adhesive for about a half an inch and then I have three quarters of an inch um, almost three quarters of an inch that will glue down onto the book so the first step is going to be to glue this onto the spine piece I want to make sure that this is the the exact length so that when it falls it does lay flat. I'm going to apply adhesive on this inside of the spine piece. I want to work fast so that my brush doesn't dry. I'm going to fold this over so that I keep my surface area clean. And I'm going to put this in the middle with my score marks. that to align as carefully with my score marks as possible. I can fold this over, fold this over so that my spine is square. Working quickly but not carelessly, I'm going to add going to add adhesive on this edge. I remove that, turn this over, make sure that that's flat. Check my surface. If I have too much adhesive, I might put it here first so that I don't get globs in here. And I'm working in that direction, never this direction, because I don't want it to get on that side. If I'm finished, I can throw that away. And 
once again fold this over fold this over and I am and I should put this under weight for a while this is clean I can put that under some new board and then I have some weights I'll cover this up and I'll just freshen my brush up clean it so it doesn't get dry I'll leave that for a few minutes you can see that it's it's flat um, each time I do something I realize that I probably should have done something different and in this case using a dark sheet I use this paper because it's the same paper that's I'm using just for this cover is available but if you probably can see that it the value changes on the spine a little bit um, and if you were using sometimes a book cloth is even more translucent you would most likely want to use white um, and here I'm going to erase this line most of the line just to prevent any with time and age sometimes a mat some material uh, inks and stuff will actually seep through um, but I've left enough that I can use as a guide and I want to make sure that I do not put any adhesive in this distance which is equal to the thickness of the spine and in order to help me align those edges I'll use these little um, either paint edges I get at the paint store or the hardware store and uh, eventually they get um, real covered with they get covered with adhesive and I can either take hot water wash it off or if it gets sometimes if they rust I'll just they're, they're very inexpensive um, I use my brush and also another thing that comes to mind I, I have washed this in the time that I let this dry but if I'm working and I want to if I want to if I'm working and I don't want to have to wash the brush I can wrap it in in a, in a, in a saran wrap or some type of a plastic film or a plastic bag and keep the air off of it you can let that sit a little bit longer I can see this line it may not show up on on the video I think I can see it there it is I like flat brushes cuz I can dab the adhesive on it I want to make sure that I have enough on there so that it will stick. I'm going to I'm just going to get rid of that. I'm going to apply this first before I put adhesive on the next one or the other side. And I have a one thing about Sobo is you have a short forgivable moment in time. Uh, I want to make sure that my fingers that's clean. When I was talking about you have a, a, a repositionable or forgivable if it's not good I can I can peel it off. Okay, so that's, it has adhesive on it. I'll put some weight. Let's see if you can see that. Okay, I will grab my paint edger.
picked up a little bit of lint so I, I wiped it on the edge there. I don't want to do that. Here again I have adhesive on there. This waste sheet saves me every time. And I've worked this spine piece based on the width of the spine. So the width of the spine defines that edge. Then the width of that spine comes here. This area does not get adhesive applied to it. And then about three quarters of an inch does. Then we're going to come back and cover this with a decorated paper. At this point I'll put weight I have no adhesive coming through here. I'll throw that one away. There's no adhesive oozing out of the side, so I don't need to use wax paper. I might use wax paper, make sure the wax paper is clean, just to protect that. And then I'll find the smooth side of this board. And now I am going to leave that for a good 30 minutes or so. There's no, no point in rushing that part. The spine piece should be dry on the book. We're going to go to the final stage of, of adding um, paper to the cover. I went ahead and added a piece to, to one side. You can see this decorated paper is a, uh, act, it's an actual watercolor that uh, was, was an experiment. I didn't do this, but it was large enough to use for the cover, cover of the book. I'll show you the steps to paste this paper on the cover. I have this little ruler. It's about it's three quarters of an inch, and I'll use that as a guide. Um, it, you always want to make sure that when you have paper that has a a specific design on it, you want to make sure that you're putting it in the orientation that you want. I want this dark area to be on the same same side as the dark area on this one. Um, and so I just want to double check that. I can use um, an edger if I want. I'm just going to estimate about half an inch for the, for the area of the adhesive. I'll remove the edger, get it out of the way, lift this up. Move the waste sheet. I've set up a little block that I can use to keep this ruler in place. I have adhesive on there and I'm just looking to make sure that there's some uniformity. can move this out of the way, remove this. I can check it visually. Uh, something that I like about PVA is that I have a, a brief moment where if this is not straight, I could lift it up. But it looks like it's aligned properly. I'm going to carefully, this has, this is a, an actual watercolor, so I want to make sure that I'm, I'm not too harsh on the on the surface, I don't want to rub anything off. Okay. I have a little piece of, of metal. It's, 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 it's square. It's a half inch square. And it has some weight to it. It's just a piece of metal, square metal that I, I actually ordered online. Instead of using a ruler to measure out a half inch I'll just place this here against the foredge of the book and I'll just take a, a sharp blade and cut that. I can use the same metal stock that way I'll that way that'll be even and this might be slightly short but I won't worry about that yet. So I have, I have 
an opportunity to make a choice. In this case, you can see that when the book opens, it opens to a, a folio of blue. In this case, I have not attached my third flat piece. You will see that I've cut out a little section or a, a large notch so that when, when this goes in, that this piece of paper will not overlap on the thread. I don't know that that makes a, a, a major mistake, but at least it's not going to add a bump to when I feel here. So I'm going to attach this inside here with a little bit of adhesive. So I've put adhesive on both sides of it, and I want to be sure that I get this centered so that none of the flat uh, paper goes beyond the head or the foot of the book. So I have attached this flat center piece between the folio, and before I turn this in, I, I often like to to take my finger or a bone folder and pre-fold it. That will give me a little bit of an impression. I want to cut a small corner of this off. I want to leave this is more than I need and I'll show you why in a minute, but I want to leave about about two thicknesses of the of the cover boards. So as I fold this over, you'll notice there's a a little bit of an over overfold there. And if it's too much, I can trim that out a little bit. But my preference on a book is to do the, the head of the book, the foot of the book first, and then bring this, this over at the end. The choice that I can make, and it's, um, I can bring this over I can bring this over just the outside of that cover folio and then once that's all adhered I can bring this down and glue this let's see if I can and glue this over that way when I open the book I have the inside of this dark folio or I can bring that down close this up and then put adhesive on the outer edge of this and close that. When I open the book from this in in this method, I open it to white sheets, but in this case, I open it to a dark folio. And it's I it's your, it's your choice. Maybe you want to put a label or an inscription in here, and then you come to the first page. Or maybe you don't, and you just want it to go to the white. The only difference being is that you would elect to put this on top of the outer folio and glue that down, or you bring the, the center piece in that down here, close that, and then then glue that down. I'm going to repeat what I did in the front. I'm going to use a piece of waste paper and like I said I like to put down these short sides first and then the long side. So I'll apply, I, I apply paste halfway on the cover and halfway on the turnover and then I just bring it out here And remember, this is the outer folio. I still have this. I still have this flat sheet that was pasted down. 
as I turn this over, the, the paper molds well, and I can take a bone folder and carefully make sure that this is crisp. Since I've put adhesive, I'll make sure that I have, I'll tuck these little areas in. You'll see them when you do this. And I'll make sure that there's adhesive underneath it so that area will stick. Or then I'll, I'll bring this over. The moisture from the PVA will help flatten this out and shape it. And then allow, allow this to be crisp. Okay, so the book is starting to look finished. I have a clean piece of waste paper. I'm going to apply a small band on these three sides. Remove this. I'm going to get a piece of wax paper. Then I bring the cover to the book. I can use a bone folder, but since this is an original watercolor, I want to use just firm pressure and I don't want to be overly hard on it. I don't want to rub anything off of it. I'll protect that. The other side is already dry, so I'll, I'll put this under some blocks, and I'm going to let that sit for about four hours. I don't have any need to open it, and when if I open it, sometimes the paper, if it's if you've used a lot of paste, the paper might stretch, and I'm confident that it's going to look good when I open it. So it's going to sit there for about four hours, and in that time. I'll clean up and wash my brush. It's been four hours since we finished the book. It opens and as you see it opens into this inside of this folio and then it goes to the white page. That was the one of the decisions that that was one of the choices we had. The spine as you open it will move and that's because we didn't put any adhesive in that in that space closest to the spine. Characteristic of, of the book is we used a folio of cardstock the same size as the book block. It is a little bit rough because I don't have a guillotine or a plow and um, I've tried to make that part as smooth as possible but if you have a guillotine you could cut that down after it's been sewn but and before you case it in but i hope you enjoy